Well, hello, beautiful people. Welcome back, you guys. Welcome to the video where we're finally sitting down and testing out the new brand over to Ulta. It's called Undone Beauty, and this is a more affordable-esque makeup brand. So I went on to the Ulta website, and I picked up, I think, everything or almost everything that they launched. That way we could get a really good, well-rounded feel, a good first impressions, and let you guys know about the texture, consistency, coverage, kind of just what are we looking at with this brand as a whole. And I'm actually going to start off by going through the, um, the Undone Beauty website, because over over there, they kind of have, you know, a little bit more of a snapshot of who they are and what they're all about. And from what I could gather, they're kind of wanting to be like an amalgamation of minimalism or minimalistic makeup, but also give you really good quality. And I was looking um, under their about section here and it says, we're out to undo the expected. Undone was created to offer luxury quality products that do more for less. Our unique makeup products are designed to create flawless everyday looks on a range of skin tones and easily build for sultry nights or your favorite look of the moment. Trusted natural ingredients are infused in every formula to add skincare benefits with every use, and we didn't forget about your lashes either. Our brushes include patent-pending innovations that bring out the best in our products and you. Everything is always clean, cruelty-free, and vegan. And from what I can see between, like, reading that on their website, looking at the packaging, that does seem to be the direction of this. It's more of, like, a minimalistic, do more with what you have, um, you know, no fuss type situation. And I'd say for me, with, you know, today with where I'm at in my makeup, this is very fitting for me because, and I don't know if anybody else is like this, you can tell me in the comments, but I am very much so the type that I want, to, like going into spring and summer especially, I prefer lighter coverage. I prefer that less is more look. And so going through today, that's really what I'm going to be looking for. You know, looking looking at the products themselves, are they buildable? Are they blendable? And are they something that really is workable? Like, could I wear this with a CC cream? Could I wear it with medium coverage? Can I wear it with high coverage? Um, you know, what is that pigmentation like? Does it really blend? And you know, just the little things like that that really can add the versatility to the product. Now, I also want to say, too, this video is going to take a hot second, so I'm going to just shut myself up, grab a drink, grab a snack, grab some patience, and uh, I hope that you guys are ready, okay? So let's go ahead. Oh, wait, pause. Hello, what am I doing before? I'm sorry, excuse me. Um, before we get going into the video, I would really love to just pause, introduce myself. If you're new here, my name is Paige. This is Seeking Alexandria. Welcome to the channel. I put up three new videos a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, usually right around like 7, 7.30-ish a.m., my time here in good old northern Michigan. And then also, if you haven't done so yet, please, please take a second and go follow follow me over on Instagram. Everything will be linked down below. I'm trying to hit 10K if you're new, um, or maybe if you've never heard this spiel before, I'm trying to hit 10K. And I put up a ton, a ton of content over there, whether it is plus size fashion, OOTDs, you know, reels, makeup, uh, makeup application, testing new makeup, stuff like that. There's always stuff going on. Not only do I upload all of that stuff to the feed, but I also really, really enjoy um, uploading to the Insta stories, hanging out with you guys, you know, throughout the day. We do everything, unboxings and car rides, doctor's appointments, anything that's going on kind of in my life as like a behind the scenes, you know, more so on the community side of things, that's where I keep it. So if you're into all of that, if you like me, my personality, or you just want to get to know me a little bit better, I would really appreciate it. Again, if you check out Instagram, everything will be linked down below. But with that, let's go ahead, let's zoom the camera in and let's get started. Oh my God, I feel like this intro took forever. Let's go. All right, so the first thing to spec out here, I did go ahead and use the Marshmallow Primer from NYX as my primer for today because on the Ulta website, as well as on their actual website, they do not have like a regular primer, quote unquote, like, you know, the marshmallow one, a Tatcha, you know, anything with like that creamy type texture. It fills in pores, hydrates, nothing like that. And uh, we will touch on that a little bit later because they do have what they call the under over powder, which is something that they say you can either use under your makeup as a powder primer, or you can use over top of it to set everything down. It's supposed to, you know, minimize the look of pores and stuff like that. Um, but I didn't think because normally I know some people use powders as a primer and that's great, but but because I don't normally do my makeup like that, I didn't want to change it up now because then if something goes wrong or I don't like it, I won't know like what products I like and which ones I don't. So I went ahead, primed with the NYX, and from here, I thought we would go ahead and start talking about their different foundation options because they do have um, two different options here. One of them is a more matte one. It is the Unfoundation Matte Tint, and then the other one is the Unfoundation Light Coverage Glowy Tint. They both retail for $14. Now, as far as the shade range goes on both of these, it looks like the matte one comes in nine shades, the glowy one comes in eight. The shade range is not great, obviously, if it only has eight shades or nine shades, um, but I understand, too, with, like, lighter coverage products, there is a lot more flexibility there. Why does makeup have to look so made up, especially for skin types looking for an oil-absorbing finish? Undone Beauty did that with the Barely There Softly Matte Unfoundation Matte Tint. This oil-absorbing, buildable formula allows for subtle, everyday coverage and can be layered with a night, or can be layered for a night out. Formula to leave 
achieve a mattifying natural finish while also conditioning the skin made with tea tree oil to help with oil control and blemishes. It's going to give you lighter coverage, a matte radiant natural finish, and again, vegan and paraben free and all that good stuff. Okay, so that is the matte one. Now, the other one here, the um, glowy tint version, it says basically the same thing. It's meant to be a barely there um, light coverage glowy tint. It's a buildable formula for day to night transition. And this one also says that it is made with coconut extract, a star ingredient that helps evenly hydrate for a non greasy, dewy glow. All right, now looking at the two bottles here again, these retail for $14. So they are on like the more, I would say, affordable, like physician's formula side of pricing, like right around in there, maybe, maybe a little bit cheaper. And uh, I will say, first of all, I'm not mad at the packaging. I like squeezy tubes. And I like with these ones specifically that they did put some attention into the detail because this one is the matte foundation tint. And I like that um, it's actually a matte bottle with all matte lettering. While this one, the glowy tint actually has the shiny packaging. So I just, you know, it's like a cute little distinction. All right. So first up here, this is the glowy one. And I really like the feeling of it. It has a uh, really nice consistency, very creamy. And obviously the coverage is on the light side, but I love the way that it has like a light natural sheen to it. Then for the other side here, I grabbed the shade 405 Pearl Light. This is the matte side. And this one, it feels just as creamy as the other side, which I like. They both have a beautiful texture to them. But uh, this one I'm noticing as it just sits on my hand and starts to dry down, it does give you more of like a natural, more satin-esque texture. And I'm actually going to roll them around in the light a little bit. That way you can see this one, the glowy one is actually maintaining that glowy texture, that glowy finish. While this side, just even after being on my hand for a couple of seconds, is actually starting to settle down and be much more of like a soft, like a soft matte, soft natural kind of finish to it. And I really like that. I like that the finishes are so true. Now for me, because I'm combo leaning oily, I'm going to go in with the matte version today because this is the one, especially going into like the spring summertime, this is the one that I would be more apt to wear. Um, so I'm going to be going in with this and I'm going to be applying it with a fresh Oh, honey, a fresh foundation brush. This is from Fenty Beauty. This is their 115. And I'm going to go in with about this much here of the foundation, the matte one. And I'm just going to start lightly buffing it all over. Oh my God, I love, I love this brush. Guys, this has like no coverage to it. Like, I don't even mean light coverage. I mean, like, the kind of light coverage where you question if you even put it on. And comparing the two sides on camera, it might show up with a little tint. But in person, if I were to just, like, go out right now and go live my life, you would never know that I even put anything on this side of my face because the coverage is so unbelievably light. So I'm just going back in here. I'm adding a little bit more. And I definitely think building it up helped. It helped kind of give me more of that even. And you can even see it on camera now where it just slightly kind of evens out the complexion. All right, so next up, we are going to get in here to their little concealer palette. But before we go in and start covering stuff up some more, I wanted to give you guys a shot of just the CC cream built up on my skin. That way you have like a, a good up close idea of what I'm talking about when I say light coverage, because all of my like major redness, my current acne, all of that is very much so on display. But it just very lightly softened this redness, again, blended in really, really nicely. And the color actually works pretty well with my skin tone. From far away, it looked a little bit too light, but it actually does work pretty nicely. Now from there, like I said before, I want to get into this little uh, Conceal to Reveal palette. This is their 3-in-1 cream coverage palette, and I have this in the version 425 Cream Light. Now here's the thing about this that's confusing me. They only have five shades of this, which makes no sense because when it comes to a concealer, you would actually need more shades, but then for the glowy and the matte CC tint cream things, they had eight and nine of those, but five of these. That makes absolutely no sense because the shade range on this is abysmal. Now going into the description, this is kind of interesting because they actually gave you a three-in-one concealer formula with customizable coverage. So there's a sheer formula, a medium formula, and an opaque one, which is a total coverage concealer for blemishes and tattoos. The medium one is full coverage for under the eye circles and over like areas you need coverage. And then of course the sheer one is a dewy coverage for all over the face or you can use it for highlighting. And also just as a side note, it does say that this has a coconut also in it. So again, if that's an issue for you, something to keep in mind, but I want to go ahead here and swatch all three formulas just to get a feel for the coverage. So over here we have the light coverage medium and then all the way up to the heavier one. And you know, I don't know on camera if it shows up, but in real life, I actually can tell a difference there. So what I want to do here is actually go into the bottom one, which I believe is the highest coverage. And I want to play around here and see if we can actually get some coverage. So I'm going to take and just tap it over my like blemishes, my more red areas. 
and I'm gonna let that sit there, kind of let it melt in with my skin and then come back and blend it out later. Then while that is doing its thing there on my blemishes, I'm taking some of the medium strength concealer here, the, the middle row, and I am just going in and lightly tapping that onto my under eyes just to see what the medium actually looks like. Guys, that's actually really pretty. The coverage is nice. Again, it is medium, so it's not giving me like 100% opacity, but it feels pretty good. Right, so now I've just been going through and kind of lightly tapping out all of the little acne areas, like the little, you know, coverage dots that I put all over. And I'm actually really happy with this so far. It's blending in beautifully. I like the, um, the way that the actual concealer is pressing in. It doesn't feel heavy at all. And the actual coverage is nice, like over my more red areas. They are looking very concealed. This one right down here, which is super inflamed, you can still see a little bit, but I'm not surprised by that. So with this one, I would say I like the amount of coverage. I'm actually going to add a little coverage to my chin. Uh, but I like that the amount of coverage you get is very workable because, you again, you have all three of those options. And I really like that it just kind of seamlessly buffs into the skin. So as far as using this one, like, on the face, I like it. But I will say up under the eyes, I don't know that it's going to be my favorite formula because just for me with hydrating concealers in general, I tend to struggle with them being, like, hyper creasy. But this one does look really, really nice. I mean, what do you guys think? I think that that looks really good, very lightly perfected. You can still see you know, some areas over here where there's slight redness, but it did help kind of correct the other areas and just make everything look a lot more even. All right, so next up from there, we're going to start going into their cream products. Obviously, I have four different products here, and I want to start off first with their water-based bronzer stick. I have this in the shade, what is this, 210 Baked for a cool neutral to yellow undertone. I believe this one actually comes in four shades. Yes, it comes in four shades. It's $10, and it uh, currently, with six reviews has three and a half out of five stars. Again, I have mine in the shade, what shade, wait, what shade did I just say this was? Shade Baked. I have it in the shade Baked. Okay, so now I'm going to need a little more information because I just swatched it and this is what it looks like. It looks like actual pumpkin shit. Like what, what, why? Why does it look, maybe, you know what, maybe once you apply it, it looks a little bit, a little, a little, a little bit less pumpkin puree maybe? I, I don't know. Let's read. Okay, it says, why is bronzing such a high risk operation? Undone Beauty undid the orange Okay, um, I would beg to differ. Uh, the orange streaky looking, the streaky look with a super fresh, ultra buildable water-based water bronzer stick, okay, that applies long lasting a wash of color. I believe the wash of color, very, very, like I had to build this up a lot to get this color. So I believe that the unique water-based formula melts into your skin with no streaks. It's mistake proof. Why water-based? Because water blends best. Hydrating formula that added coconut water. Again, there's more coconut. Coconut water for a dewy natural finish and a long lasting glow. Water bronzer feels cool to the touch. Yes, it does. And helps skin feel and look refreshed when applied. The non-comedogenic formula won't clog pores. All right, so I'm going in with this one. True to the the theme and lightly just tapping it on and then blending out with my fingers. Why does that kind of work? Wait a second, I'm confused. Like, am I the only one kind of stunned that this doesn't look as bad as I thought it would? Like, yes, it's pulling a little bit orange, but it's not nearly as bad as I thought. The actual formula is very nice and cooling. I like that because, y'all, I got hot flashes for days. And I like the fact that when I blend it out, it really does just blend seamlessly. Like, it doesn't Okay, does that kind of work? I know, okay, up here it looks a little orange, but like right through here, it's almost like settling in with my skin and kind of like melting into the color. I'm kind of shocked with this too because I feel like it's doing a nice job actually building up the color. Like for as sheer as this is, I was worried that I wouldn't be able to get any real definition. And I just went back in like right over these areas right here on both sides of my cheekbones and just very lightly kind of tapped in. And I'm impressed that the color has actually built, like the depth of it has built up really well. Ooh, these are beautiful, you guys. Next up, we're getting into cream blushes. And those are stunning. I really love this coral one right here. Oh my God, okay. These are, what are these? These are $10. They come in eight different shades. I have 310 Rosy, which is this one. And then the coral shade is 325 Flare. And it looks like right now these have five reviews with four and a half out of five stars. And with these, they actually went ahead kind of like they did with the concealers. And they're giving you three different formulas, a sheer, a medium, and a more opaque one. Um, they are on the dewier side as far as the finish. It's a customizable 
cream blush and lip color. Also, again, infused with coconut extract for a natural dewy glow. And it's supposed to allow you to curate any intensity that you're looking for. If you want natural, if you want like a full glam moment. Okay, so these are absolutely gorgeous. I'm just going to swatch um, the middle of each. So this is the medium intensity. And those are absolutely gorgeous. And for these, I actually want to apply one to each side. And I'm going to start off with the coral shade right here. And just lightly, ooh, oh, that's very, very pretty. Like, oh my God, guys, that is such a gorgeous color. I don't know if this is actually showing up on camera or not, but the way that that just pops the cheek. And then next up here, I want to go into the other side with the rosy pink color. And again, just lightly tap it on the upper part. Oh, that's really beautiful. God, these are both more rich than I thought they'd be on the opaque side. That's just so easy, and it blends like a dream. Guys, these are some of the most blendable damn creams. All right, so something that I want to try right here, I went in and I noticed that I took the blush here just a little bit too forward, and I want to go and see if I can push it back, like if I can kind of um, reshape that area. So I'm going to grab the cream concealer here, actually grab the lightest shade, and I am just going to, like the lightest opacity rather, and I'm going to take that and just lightly tap it into these areas just to see if I can lightly kind of blend the uh, blush back. Oh my god, that actually looks really pretty. It kind of helps to soften it because it doesn't have a lot of opacity to it. The concealer doesn't. All right, so last but not least in the cream category, we have the Rose Lit Water Highlighter Stick. Retails for $10. It only comes in this one shade. It actually swatches beautifully. And uh, basically, this is supposed to be just like all the other ones. It's a water-based technology, melts into your skin, a sheer, ultra-blendable, ultra-buildable kind of glowy moment. It does have coconut water in it. But this one, I'm going to try pat it in with my finger instead. I find that I have better luck uh, like right up in this region because I have so much texture when I just go in and lightly press because the heat from my hands makes it kind of lightly melt into my skin. Ooh, that's actually really beautiful. Has a nice cooling sensation, just like the uh, bronzer did. Very, very, um, very smooth and cooling to the skin. Also, something else that's interesting about this, I wasn't sure if I would necessarily like it because when you swatch it on your hand, you can actually see it has little teeny tiny particles of glitter in it. Um, and I don't really typically like to have glitter in any sort of a highlight formula. It just doesn't, it usually doesn't pull well on my skin. Now, something that's interesting, that being said, um, is that this as a highlight kind of sinks into my other products. Like, I'm noticing when I swatch it, it has this really beautiful sheen to it. You can see it on my hand, like it has a little reflection. But the actual product, while I'm applying it to my skin up here, is almost like really pressing itself, like pressing itself too far in to my other products to where you almost can't even see it. Like, you can see a little bit of a glow, but it really doesn't, like you can see a glow right here, but it's not really standing out as much as I thought it would. Like, I, I know it has a less intensity... Uh, to it like all the other products do, but this one almost is like kind of really tucking itself in there. Right, guys, so now it's time to get into some of the powder products. And do you remember at the start of this video <laughs> when I told you this was gonna be long? Uh, yeah, I'm like not even a third of the way through these products. Hell, I don't even know that I would say I'm a quarter of the way. That's how much we have left. So I'm gonna pick up the pace a little bit. And next up, we're gonna be diving into the All Over Powder. This is that Under Over Powder that I was talking about actually at the beginning of the video. And this is interesting because when I was going through the website looking for a primer, as I mentioned, um, I noticed that they don't have like a, a normal primer and so this right here is kind of the direction that they wanted to take you where it's supposed to be their under over product that is a lightweight two-in-one formula for ultimate skin perfection this unique multi-use formula absorbs oil and minimizes pores for a perfect no makeup finish you can use it as a priming step to prep the skin or over foundation to lock down makeup for a long wearing finish it is a blendable translucent power powder works on all skin tones uh, comes in in three different shades for $12. All right, so I've been looking at this powder and it almost gives my skin like a like a naturally light radiance feel, kind of like a finishing powder. And uh, it looks really, really beautiful. It buffs in really seamlessly to the little cracks and crevasses on my hand, which I like that. I like the shade and I really like the texture of this, like the consistency of it is almost more of like a blurring consistency, which I think is really, really beautiful. So I'm gonna start off here and I am, do I wanna try using this on my under eyes? You know what? I will try try it just to see how it looks because this concealer up under my eyes, I can already tell you, probably not the best one for me because my under eyes are so creasy, but uh, I'm still going to try this nonetheless just to see how it looks under there because maybe not with this concealer, but because it's so lightweight, maybe it would work with a different one. All right, so first things first, I'm just going in, lightly tapping out my under eyes, making sure that I don't have a ton of 
creases before, before I set them. Uh, so let's go ahead and tap all that out. And then I'm going to go in here with my Sigma P82. And I'm just going to use that to lightly press into this area and I'm taking this same brush technique and I'm actually going to go all the way through the t-zone the nose right here and then down around like my smile lines because these are the areas on me that have to be set a little bit more aggressively and then over the rest of my face here I'm going to take the refer number 22 uh, it's just a big old fluffy beefy boy and I'm going to take and lightly tap that into here and then kind of just graze over everything. All right, so things that I'm noticing with this powder, number one, it does have a really nice lightweight feel, more of like a blurring effect even, I would say, over the apples of my cheeks, my pores, my texture, all of that actually looks pretty good. But um, because it does have more of a lightweight texture, my skin is uh, starting to be a little bit more problematic, like right through here. And that's something that kind of tells me because of the nature of the other products being more dewy, more lightweight, I wouldn't be able to use this as a setting powder necessarily, but using it as a finishing powder I think would be perfect because it has that nice kind of lightweight movement to it where it would still smooth everything out. Um, but going in for me from for future reference, I would probably need to use like a foundation powder first and then use this. But uh, the powder so far, like this is probably one of my favorite products I've used because I really, really like it and I love the texture. All right, so next up here we have the Warm Up 4-in-1 Bronzer. It's a big old compact looking a little something like this. The two shades right right here are a shimmery, almost like a highlighty looking type formula. And these two right here are matte, just in case you can't see that. Now it says here in the description, it says, why do we have to collect a face bronzer, a big bronzer for body plus highlighters and strobers? Well, I don't, I don't know. Why do we? Please tell. Um, Undone Beauty undid this with the Nonzer 4-in-1 highlighting palette. The Nonzer. I love that. Um, it is a big surprise of a palette packed with an ultra fine, truly blendable, never glittery pigments. It features two matte shades. Oh, okay. So it did explain it. I guess I didn't have to. Uh, two matte shades in deep to mid warm brown and two non-sparkly shimmer shades in warm peach and a sunny cream. Colors can be used individually as eyeshadows to highlight your favorite spots, build and contour, or blend for the perfect all-over glow. Made with coconut extract, the star ingredient that helps everything stay hydrated and non-greasy. And yeah, pretty much that's what it is. Two shades, two matte, two shimmer. And I want to stop here. Let's actually, you know what? I want to start by swatching because I need to see what I'm getting myself into. So I'm going to take and swatch. Oh, those actually feel very nice. Okay. Do some swatches. These are all just one, one um, swipe right there. Oh, those are actually gorgeous highlighters. Okay. And those are the bronzers, which look, <laughs> look very interesting. Also, can we just talk about this packaging real quick? How in the hell, if I wanted to use this shade right here, let's say for all over bronzer, how am I going to get a bronzer brush in here? Like how, how am I going to get this and ensure that I only grab this one shade and not the highlight next to it or this other very, very uh, terracotta type shade next door? Like how, how would I go about isolating this one shade? Because with highlights, a lot of times you have like a thinner, smaller, more detail-esque highlight face brush. So these ones I get, but this, this is kind of a problem because even this one, like there, there's just, there's no space right there. Like it's going to be very difficult to get those um, out of the, out of the pan here. So that's my first issue that I'm seeing. Um, but with that being said, let's go ahead and figure out how are we going to bronze? Okay, let's, let's get into it. So I think this is going to be the only brush that I have that I could use for a highlight that might, that might work. We'll see. And this is the e.l.f. airbrush stipple. And normally I would use this with a cream bronzer. That's why it's dirty looking right there. You can see the little line uh, because I love using this for cream products. It buffs them in beautifully. But as far as the size goes, it's kind of duo fibered and I think it'll kind of fit in here. So I am going to very, very gently tap into this product right here. Okay. So I'm having kind of a conundrum right now because this actually is looking so nice on my skin tone and on camera, everything looks orange. So I can't, I can't go by the monitor, but like this looks so good. I've just been running it through. It's the lighter of the two shades, this one right here. And it looks surprisingly nice on my skin tone. <laughs> That's actually really pretty guys. I'm I'm shook right now. I can't believe that I like this as much as I do. All right, now before I go into the highlight, there actually isn't any um, any additional like powdered blush in this line. So I'm just gonna take a teeny bit here of the Bare Minerals Bounce and Blur. This is in the shade Mauve Sunrise. And I'm not taking very much of it. I just want a little flush to kind of blend in um, with that bronzer. So I'm just gonna take and lightly 
tap that up here. All right, so I know the palette we just used had two highlight shades in it, but I also went ahead and picked up their um, Nonzer 4-in-1 Highlighting Palette. And basically, as the name would suggest here, this just has four different shades of highlight, which I did go ahead and swatch on the back of my hand. They actually look really, really beautiful. And I think between all the highlights that I have, I'm actually gonna take the lightest pink shade in here. And to take that, I'm actually gonna grab my BH number 18. I'm just gonna very lightly kind of glaze right through that one side. Okay, so this highlight definitely has some payoff. Damn, okay, she's, she's got some blind to her. And honestly, all of this for 10 bucks, okay? This big ass honky palette is $10, and I actually really like it. This purple shade right here, bitch, putting that all over my eye would absolutely be uh, gorgeous. All right, now really quick, I am gonna go in, just because my skin does need a little help along the jawline and up here, I'm gonna take some of my Fenty Beauty uh, Pro Filter Soft Matte Powder. This is in the shade 150, and I'm just gonna take it here on my little Fenty sponge and very lightly add a little bit of coverage and a little bit of definition right along this area. And I wanted to grab this now because a lot of the products that I'm using from Undone, like the combination of them, I think is what it is, is actually creating like a really thick textured look around my jawline. And I think it's because if I had to guess, because the powder I used to set my face was such a light powder and my skin just needs a little bit more density to the powder. So I'm just taking this and lightly running it along and that just made the biggest, wow, that made the biggest difference. Okay. All right, so next up going into brows, we have their flawless. Lush Brow Fill and Fluff Duo. And basically what this is, is a brow two-in-one duo. So on one side, you have the brow gel that creates an all-day full, naturally groomed looking brow. And then on the other end, you have a precision felt tip pen for filling and enhancing. So kind of like the brow flick, the Milani weekend brow, that kind of thing. And it looks like here, it says this is infused with castor oil for brow nourishment and conditioning. And again, it comes uh, clean, vegan, paraben-free, cruelty-free, and I have have it in the shade warm brown. All right, so I have my brows done and I just wanna say this little brow duo situation, I actually really like. Um, a couple of things to keep in mind, the brow gel is a little bit on the light side, a little bit a little bit on the thin side. So when you're working it through your brows, be mindful because it can kind of flick and go all over. But uh, if you keep that in mind, it's a really beautiful texture, very lightweight, which I enjoy. And it actually does shape and kind of fill in the brows really nicely. And then the other end here, the pen side actually performed really nice as well no issues. It flicked beautifully. The color is good. This is a color uh, or a swatch of just the pen side by itself. And uh, overall though, the texture, everything about this performance was 10 out of 10, no issues. But now I want to start going from there into the eyeshadow palettes. They both retail for $14. There's two different versions. This one is Bare and this one is Soul. The Soul palette is actually 100%, no, I'm sorry, it does have two mattes here. Um, a light kind of a bone pinkish kind of color and then the black shade at the end. But other than that, everything in between is like a you know shimmer shade really beautiful bright and poppy and then the other one over here this is the bare palette which is more neutral tones now because these palettes don't have the little dividers in here they are a little bit more difficult to swatch but I did try they're just they're just a little bit messy but this one right here is the bare palette you can see that the shimmers um, as well as the mattes have a beautiful payoff I don't have any issues as far as like texture they feel very very nice like very silky formula and then this one over here again this is the soul palette and these are the shades I, truth be told I actually really like this palette a lot I love that it even has this little pop of green it has the pop, pop of pink and purple right there now at first I was gonna go in and use just the bare palette here and do like a, a neutral standard brown look but now that I've went through and swatched the soul palette here I really love this green shade it's right here um, I swatched it all by itself just so I could kind of wriggle in its glory and I really like this I love that it has a softness but they also added um, little teeny gold glitter reflect to it so it kind of has a little bit of movement to it as well and I think what I want to do is actually put this like all over the lid and just have it be like a one and done shadow look so first things first I'm just taking some of my wet and wild incognito concealer here and I'm gonna use that as a nice light base just so we got something to stick to So I think where I'm gonna start here is actually going in with just this green shade and I'm just taking it on my finger and going in over top of this concealer no glitter glue or nothing and I want to start by lightly just kind of placing that and keep it predominantly on the outer half of the eye right here and kind of blend it in an upward motion, just keeping it nice and soft. And then on a different clean finger, I'm gonna go in with this white shade right here. It's the first bright shimmer. She got, she got a lot of payoff. And I'm gonna take that and actually pop it 
on the inner portion of the eye right here to blend it back into that green. Oh wow, that white shade has got a lot of color to it. Okay, um, so that shade is beautiful. Wow, I like that a lot. And then really lightly, I'm taking the uh, one matte light bone colored shade here and I'm just gonna blend that up through the crease just to kind of diffuse the white a little bit more here and make sure both of those are blended together. Wow, that actually looks really pretty. It's just a nice light green shade, but I still get that little pop on the inner corner. It has a little bit of dimension. I'm also taking some of that green shade just to tie in with the upper lash line and I'm throwing it on the lower, very, very light. And then I'm gonna go in again with some of that white shade. And I'm gonna use that actually as an inner eye highlight right there. Oh my God, oh, that's really bright. Okay, I'm gonna have to diffuse that, but I'm gonna run it onto the lower lash line just to really open up the inner eye. And then very lightly here, I'm taking this matte black shade in the palette on my Luxie, this is what, the 221 Flat Definer. And I'm just taking that and very gently kind of scooching it into the lashes and giving myself a little bit more definition. Okay, so I just added a little bit of that black to the lower lash line as well, just a little teeny bit. And I actually love those two colors together. Like this side looks so nice. It's a good soft color, but it still has the brightness, a little bit of pop. God, that is so pretty and so simple. All right, so I went ahead and finished up both eyes, obviously, and then while I was off of camera, I did go ahead and add a little bit of my Essence Banana Powder. She's, she's looking kind of rough. I don't even know where the lid is, but I went ahead and added a little bit of this under the eyes through the T-zone because as uh, time is progressing here, my skin is looking increasingly horrible right through this region. So, that, you know, just keep that in mind. When you see the up close, it's, it's not looking great. But I do want to go ahead and finish up the eyes here using these mascaras. Obviously, they have two of them. So I think the way that I I want to do this is actually go in and do one mascara on each side. So I'm going to start off here with this one. This is the Lays Lash Glaze and that's the one that retails for $9.50 and it says that this one is a lightweight serum formula and volumizing. Uh, it has a curved brush for glossy volume and it is a clump-free buildable formula infused with castor oil for lash nourishment and conditioning. And then on the other side, I'll go in with the Indie Lash Mascara, and this one says that it's gonna give you lush lashes with a natural looking separation with volume and length. It has a four-way brush that cleanly separates and builds the lash um, by lash volume from root to tip. It gives you a buildable lightweight formula that plumps and lengthens the lashes. All right, guys, so I just got done with both the mascaras and I have an up close I'll go ahead and throw up so you guys can kind of see what I got going on here but I'm gonna be dead ass honest okay I hate both of these mascaras so fucking much <laughs> like it's it's the level of hate that I have is painful um this one okay this lash lazy whatever this is um it is sticky like sticky to the point where I'm applying it and then I applied some to my lower lashes and they stuck together like like it feels like sugar water and it gives you absolutely nothing there's not really any definition there's definitely no no volume, no length. Um, th this is probably the most natural mascara I think I've ever tried ever, and I do not like it. So that being said, of the two, this one is the better. I mean, in my personal opinion, this one is the better. But what I do not like about this one is, first of all, the wand is some weird ass like flat situation. So if you look at it, it has like a width to it, right? But then turn it to the side and it's very, uh, very thin. So it's almost more like a football type shape with zero round to it. And so the issue that I kept having with it, um, other than the fact that it is so damn clumpy, like even looking at the spikes right now, clumpy as shit. It's weird and like got like goopy clumps going on. I just don't like it. But the issue that I kept having with this is that because the shape of the wand was what it was, I couldn't take it and roll it. I couldn't really do much to give my lashes any additional length to like draw the product through. And so this one just ended up being more like a little bit more thickness on my lashes, but ultimately that thickness came with more clumps and I couldn't really build the lashes like either in length or in volume. So this one did slightly edge out the other, but not, I, I wouldn't recommend either of these. All right now from there, finally we are moving into lips. I do have three different options here and I figured we would run through all of them briefly. So first up, this is their light on lip. It comes in eight different shades, retails for $10. I have it in the shade 845 Gosh Garnet. Oh my God, that's such a good name. Gosh Garnet, that's, that's good. And 
I just read up here somewhere, yes, this is a lustrous balm lipstick hybrid infused with a volume enhancing pigment. So it's meant to be kind of like a, like a really comfortable hydrating lipstick from what I'm seeing. Yeah, this is actually really beautiful. Wow, I love that color. I love how juicy it is. Oh my God. Okay, so that's gorgeous. And I actually really like the packaging on it. It's like that see-through uh, kind of like frosted white component. All right, now also from there, we have the Lip Life Lip Balm. It comes in 10 different shades. This is $7. And it says here in the description, do we have to buy a separate lip scrub for smooth lips? I, I mean, typically yes, but continue. Um, Undone Beauty undid that with the Lip Life Lip Balm, a fun applicator and super smooth moisturizing balm. The lip balm and scrub in one. The soft gloss finish paired with a lip exfoliation is the best formula for the perfect pout. We packed this lip balm with hydrating ingredients like natural shea, jojoba, and rose hip to help smooth and condition the lips. Interesting. I have this in the shade natural beige, and I'm not sure how well you can see it, but this has one of these little applicators where you push up or squeeze on the tube, and it's going to come out. And these little bristles up here, they're definitely um, not abrasive at all. They're not like scratchy. They're more just like little silicone bristles. All right, so without having tested it, uh, there it is swatched on the hand. It has a beautiful sheen to it, really nice silky texture, and it is about half as opaque as the other one is. And then the final lip product that we have here, this is the Big Papa Lip Gloss. I grabbed it in the shade Peach and Honey. It comes in five different shades, retailing for $10, and it currently has two reviews, giving it five out of five stars. And it says here that this is a gloss balm hybrid with a supersized applicator. It is ultra moisturizing, never sticky, high shine lip gloss infused with cloudberry seed oil to condition and nourish the lips. Ooh, interesting. All right, so let's get a look here at this big old beefy applicator. Ooh, I like that nice big doe foot. Let's give her a little swatch. Definitely the least opaque of the three. I, on camera, it just looks like a big glossy streak. In real life, it's basically the same with a very, very subtle pink tint that uh, you truthfully you'd never be able to see whatever you pair that with but it actually looks really nice the smell of it is a very very light faint peach but truthfully I mean, unless you're like right on top of it like huffing the applicator you can't really smell it um which i like i actually like actually overall now that i think about it none of the products we've tested today have like have had a, like any kind of a crazy strong scent which is fantastic i'm so happy to see a brand that is good and consistent with that now i was originally gonna go in with this lipstick to add a little bit of color but um this one it has a little bit more of like that pinky undertone to it and I don't really love the color of this with the green eye so I'm actually going to go in and add a little bit first here of the mented lip pencil this is in the shade dope it's just a really nice brown nude color and I'm just going to lightly line the lips here with this Oh yeah, that brown nude is gonna work perfectly. Y'all know I love a good brown nude lip, man. I can't stop. And then from there, I'm gonna go in and top the lip liner with some of this gloss. This is again that peach and honey. I'm just gonna take and apply a nice amount. God, this feels so good. I actually really like the texture. It's very smoothing, definitely not sticky. They weren't kidding about that. Mmm. Oh my God, but it's so pretty. All right, guys, so with the lips done, we are officially pulling into the station. Toot, toot, beat, beat, bitch. The train is stopping and the full face is done. So let's go ahead and let's start talking about some things because I think the way that I want to do this, I don't I don't want to go back through and touch on every single product, but there are a couple of standouts in both directions, you know, things that I like, things that I didn't like, and I would like to kind of just run through those briefly, give you kind of my all-encompassing thoughts, and of course, give you the up close. So let's go ahead and start off with things that I really did like, like things that I think in the future I would actually enjoy quite a bit. Based just on the order of how I did my makeup, I would actually start off with the cream blushes. I really, really like those. I like the pigmentation and I liked how workable they were because I felt like compared to the other cream products like the cream bronzer and the cream, um, the cream highlight, I felt like the blushes had the right amount of pigmentation. They were the right amount of workable. And then from there, I really liked that under over powder as well. Again, not so much as a setting powder, but using it as a finishing powder, I would definitely be interested. I like the texture. It's very finely milled. Then from that powder, I would have to go into this highlight palette. I really like this. I think it has a nice amount of intensity, but because they are um, so finely milled, I think you could actually go with the less is more route, you know, apply a very little amount, really buff it into your skin, and you'd get much more of that natural sheen, which would kind of help dial it back a little bit. But this is definitely one of those products. I could see me using it on the eyes. I could use it all over the face. I could do a lot with it. I also really like, along the same vein as that, I like the eyeshadows. They're a very simple 
similar, if not the same um, texture, that same refinement, super beautiful, great payoff. I also really love the way my brows turned out with that brow duo. I thought it was super easy to use. The pigmentation was very nice and you can build up that color as well. So if you want it a little darker, you can, you know, go over it with the pen in those areas or you can just do one little flick if you need a little less color. And it's just a very workable product, I feel. So I really like that. And then from there, again, I can't really speak to the formula if they're nourishing or any of that. But as far as like the texture, the swatches and all of that, I really am happy with all three of the lip choices. Um, I feel like the lipstick looks really beautiful. It has a nice gloss, about a medium opacity, very, very workable color like that. That's going to give you more of a punch. But if you're in it for just a little bit of color, a little bit of tint, I think the balm is beautiful. It has a nice texture to it. And even this lip gloss, I think this looks absolutely beautiful. It has great shine. And I love that it's not sticky at all. Like I don't even feel it. It almost feels kind of like kind of like a light cross between a lip gloss and a, um, a lip oil. Like it has that kind of slip to it. Again, no stick, no nothing like that. Very, very comfortable. Now with that being said, uh, we're going to go ahead and get into my least favorite products. And if I had to pick out just two products that I was just like eh, about, it would be these. Okay. These freaking mascaras. I'm not going to get into them because I just talked about them, but these mascaras are atrocious and I don't like them. I think they are uh, just awful. Again, for all the reasons I already said, I don't like them. And then as far as the rest of the products, like the unfound foundation, the concealer palette, the bronzer palette, stuff like that, the, and the other cream products as well. Those are sitting for me more in the, um, more in the me like mediocre camp, because at this point I want to go through with those ones and decide, you know, do I like them this way? Do I like them with the other products I use? And are they things that I can actually incorporate? Like take, for example, the cream bronzer and this powder bronzer right here. I thought I would absolutely hate both of them because when I swatched them, they looked so orange and just so like weirdly, uh, weirdly toned for my skin tone. And when I went in and I applied them both, I was so shocked. Like just sitting here, I can't believe how beautiful it looks on my face, like how naturally it sculpts. And so I want to go through, use them a little bit more and see if maybe the, the tone is something that just changes when it gets on my skin, or maybe it's just the unfoundation, like maybe it's the color of something else. I'm not really sure, but I want to play around with them a little bit more and kind of get a feel for the tones. And it's that way for a lot of the products. Now, don't get me wrong. Something that I will forever hate about this is like the palette, the shape of it, and the fact that I can't get my little brush in there. That's going to piss me off forever. But again, the actual product itself performed great. And I just want to get a better handle on like the rest of it, you know, the application, if it's something I could really utilize. Right, so now that we're here, we've went through all the product info. I want to finalize this video with giving you guys the up close. That way you all can kind of see what I got going on here and how things are looking. So let's get that up on the screen. And I think for me, I mean, is this the worst complexion I've ever had? No, but it definitely has a lot of problems going on. So first of all, I would say, I don't know at this moment if my skin likes the under tint, the matte one, or if it likes the concealer. I'm not really sure what's happening there, so I'll have to test those again, but I can tell you for sure that uh, there's definitely some kind of situation going on with all of these cream products stacked up on my skin, and normally I find that like I can use cream products on an everyday basis, set them with a powder, and not have an issue, but there is something about these, and I don't know if it's just because they're all so hydrating that maybe my skin doesn't like them because I am more combo leaning oily. Um, I, I wouldn't see that necessarily being a problem yet because I haven't been wearing it long enough, but there is something here that's not really jiving with something else. And I'm going to have to kind of play around with it and see what that is. But for me, the, the foundation or the, the complexion being what it is, I think that uh, it's definitely not my favorite, but it is workable. Like I can, I could refine this, you know, use some products, not use others, or maybe just not use all of these at once. That could be the problem too. And, uh, you know, I can kind of go from there. But you guys, I think at this point, I've given you all of my thoughts, all of my first impressions, and it is time to pass the mic to you all, okay? So what do you think about the line overall, the products? Have you tried them? Were you curious? What, what is your overall thoughts and opinions here? Make sure that you leave it all down below. I would love to hear from you. And of course, like I said at the start of the video, let's do a little brief recap, okay? You can subscribe. Don't forget to do that. Turn on your post notifications, of course. And uh, follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Instagram. That will be linked down below, as will all of the stuff that I use today. I will link everything that I can. Um, Makeup-wise, obviously, it'll all be linked to Ulta, but I'll have the individual products. And then I'll also link everything that I'm wearing. I can't link the necklace because I bought it a, a million years ago. I will be able to link uh, this right here. It's just a tie-dyed 90s bodysuit from Abercrombie. So cute. Um, this is also from Abercrombie. It's just a little jean shirt, which I love. Oh my God, going in, going into spring, you guys, this you're going to start seeing Jean Page living her best life. Okay, I'm talking jean on jean on jean, jean hat, jean everything, because I'm all about it. But anyways, all of that to say, okay, I will link everything that I can. And guys, I think that that's everything. Thank you 
you all so, so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Thank you for taking the time to watch this big old beefy ass video. And I hope that you all have an amazing, amazing day, night, weekend, whatever it is when you're watching this. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. We like, we like to party. We like to party. Okay, are we feeling good? We're feeling good. We're feeling refreshed. Okay. It's the final countdown. Say that again. I just pulled taco nachos out of the oven. Oh, you're my bitch. Did you just say taco nachos? Uh huh. Mm -hmm. They're hot. They just came out. I think I love you. So what am I so afraid of? <laughs> no, you didn't. Go away. Go away. Ah. What? You go sit in the truck. <laughs> That's such a northern Michigan thing to say. Go sit in the truck. And then as far as the rest of the makeup goes, like this bronzer palette and like the the uh, under tint, under boob, under what? what? What are those called? The under boob. Yeah, the under boob that you put on your face. <sighs> my ass is so numb right now. I feel like I'm going to fall out the chair because I can't feel my butt cheeks. <laughs> TMI? Probably. Do I care? <gasps> nope.